Blair held on to the half-eaten churro with her mouth, carried Catherine with one hand and the churro bowl with the other, then headed down. What happened? Many beast men ran out. She came across Rex, who was about to go out to check things out. Blair quickly walked over and asked him. At this moment, the leopard cubs came dashing in from the backyard as well, raising their heads and crying out twice before running out crazily. Children? The last note of Blair's words had just dropped when the leopard cubs had already passed by her and ran into the rain. It seems that they are all leopard beast men, too. At the thought of the group of golden leopard figures, Blair thought of Roger. Her countenance turned pale. It couldn't be that something has happened to Roger, right? Rex quickly took the bowl from her and then circled his other arm around her waist, consoling her. I heard Roger's voice. It sounds very energetic. He's definitely fine. You wait at home. I'll go and check things out. Hearing that, Blair felt relieved. She pushed his chest and said, go quickly. Rex nodded, removed his animal skin skirt, then headed out in huge strides, turning into a white tiger and dashing away. Stephen also came out of the bedroom. Blair immediately walked toward him, pouncing into his cool embrace. Stephen carried her and rubbed her stomach, frowning in dissatisfaction. A hint of perplexity flashed in his red eyes, and he quietly carried Blair to the door and stood there without making a sound, looking at the small world within the courtyard. All the leopards had run off. Then tiger roars, wolf howls, and eagle screeches rang off. With each type of sound, all the beast men of a certain species would gush out. Stephen furrowed his fiery red brows. It seemed that something serious had happened. Not long later, the massive village became empty, leaving only a couple locked in an embrace as well as the beautiful child in their arms. Blair looked outside with her eyes wide open but didn't see anyone after very long. She was about to ask Stephen to head to the top floor to take a look when a pitch-black figure finally appeared in the courtyard. Lucius? Blair tilted her head and looked at him, recognizing Lucius's identity from the wooden rods clamping on his wing. She quickly said, Come in quickly. You are still recuperating. Why did you come out? Lucius moved his steel-like muscular legs rapidly his strong orange-yellow claws stepping on the moistened ground. With each step he took, a piece of the ground would turn over, looking like tilled land. After entering the place, Lucius seemed to have thought of something and turned to take a look. He saw that a few obvious prints were made on the clean stone floor by the mud on his claws, and he instantly stopped. Blair said, Don't worry about it. What's the news? What happened? Hearing that, Lucius was about to transform and reply to her when a hand suddenly pressed down on the joint of his wings. Intense pain came from his wound. If you want to cripple this arm, then go ahead and transform. Alex lashed out angrily. Upon hearing the news, he was also planning on leaving. He had only held back because he was worried about this eagle beast man. Thank goodness he hadn't gone. Otherwise, he'd be in trouble. However, this eagle beast man ran so quickly that he couldn't catch up even in his human form. He almost got into trouble. Blair understood and threw a reproachful glance at Lucius. If your body isn't well, then don't force it. What if he were to end up suffering from permanent physical damage? Blair didn't continue. She looked at Alex and asked, But what happened? Roger encountered a group of behemoths. They're clearly headed toward us. He came back to inform us. Alex's voice and expression both seemed anxious. Behemoth tides weren't like the trifle insect tides. To the beast men, it could cause them casualties in light scenarios or get their entire tribe wiped out in serious cases. The behemoth tide was a huge threat to the beast central as well. Those short city walls could only fend off wild beasts. 
It was hard to fend off beast men with them, let alone behemoths. This was the period where the behemoths were in heat and in their reproduction phase. They were more vicious and brutal than usual. If they charged into the village, it would turn into a massacre. Blair had witnessed the prowess of a group of behemoths herself. They were like a bunch of ferocious dinosaurs, and they could also move quickly because of their excellent physical structure. In groups, they were definitely an invincible existence in the forest. She recalled that even Stephen had been chased down to the extent that he didn't have the time to catch his breath. Her face turned a shade paler. The scorpion beast men had the track record of creating an insect tide. Blair couldn't help but suspect them and look toward Lucius, who had driven a beast tide before. Lucius thought back on the memories from then, but could only recall how the female had left behind Stephen's snake scale that had antidote properties to save his life. His gaze immediately turned soft. Stephen clearly recalled that event as well. His disposition suddenly became icy cold, and he threw the Black Eagle a cold sideward glance. At the thought of how they still needed Lucius, he quickly restrained his killing intent. Back then, the matter of Blair saved from the hands of a four-striped snake beast man had taken the entire city by storm. Alex, who had paid a lot of attention to Blair, also knew about this. However, as Lucius hadn't shown himself, he had no idea which eagle beast man had such intellect and courage. Now that he saw Blair's and Stephen's reactions linking to the connection with the behemoths, the eagle beast man who had saved Blair, Alex suddenly guessed the truth. Alex couldn't help but tisk. This was really a case of fortune's fool. It was no wonder Stephen held such great hostility toward Lucius. Moreover, Lucius was really unlucky. He had gone through such difficulties to save the female, but she still ended up getting together with the feral beast. It cut off his opportunity to woo the female instead. Unlucky. He was really unlucky. You guys suspect that it's the Scorpion tribe again? Alex then shook his head. The scorpion beastmen's speed can't even compare against ordinary beastmen. If they were to carry a behemoth king egg with them, they'd be stomped into meat paste before they could lure the behemoths over. Blair looked at the mud that Lucius had brought into the house, then said, Don't forget that the scorpion beastmen excel in digging holes. If they hid underground, the behemoths wouldn't be able to detect their scent. They just need to attract the behemoths after they've run away to a safe distance, then go back underground. Wouldn't they be able to lure the behemoths over then? She paused after saying this, then added, The behemoths have a sharp sense of smell. Even if the soil can't cut off their sense of smell, there's no way they'd be able to dig out the scorpions from the soil. As long as the scorpion tribe thinks of this idea, it'd definitely be possible for them to put it into action. Blair sounded confident and her expression was anxious. Alex was shocked. Upon more thorough consideration, her words did make sense. His hatred for the scorpion tribe deepened even more. Stephen seemed consoled. His Blair was always so clever and it made him very infatuated with her. He didn't feel any sense of danger at all. Right now, there wouldn't be any risks if he wished to bring Blair with him and break away from the behemoths. As for the Beast Central, did it have any relation to him? The males exchanged news rapidly and rushed home to console their mates. The leaders took this time to discuss their plans. Roger ran back before Rex, his golden fur in a mess. He had clearly not rested for days, and his pure golden eyes were bloodshot. Roger? Blair jumped out from Stephen's embrace and headed toward the leopard worriedly. Roger ran while transforming into his human form. At the next second after his transformation, he and Blair bumped into each other. The behemoth tide is coming. I followed them for a few days and noticed that they'd been moving and stopping, but would always run in this direction. They'll come to the city any day now. 
Roger said worriedly, saying all these in one breath. He almost ran out of air. Blair wore an expression that showed that her guess was right. They would move and stop, but always accurately head toward the direction of their city. A scorpion beastman was definitely luring them over. Rex had also come back. He shook the rainwater off his body with a composed expression. He walked over to the group steadily and said, It might not be a bad thing for the behemoth tide to come. The village is lacking in food, and while it might still be fine in the rainy season, many would probably starve to death in the cold season. We'll attack the behemoths preemptively, not giving them the chance to come here. Alex listened quietly. The city lord's words made a lot of sense, but after hearing Blair's analysis earlier, he couldn't feel completely positive about the situation. However, his furrowed brows relaxed a little because of the food. If scorpion beastmen were really luring the behemoths over, it would be impossible for them to stop the behemoths. What is it? Rex could also tell that the atmosphere was solemn, and he asked in a deep voice. Roger looked at everyone strangely, frowning, and said, Those behemoths are acting very strangely. They're clearly extremely anxious, but they're moving very slowly. I wonder why this is so. The moment he said this, Blair's guess was verified. There should be scorpion beast men underground luring the behemoths, Blair said. The scorpion tribe had probably started preparing for this two months ago. The room instantly turned dead silent. If they were invaded by the behemoths, the beast central would be a goner. We mustn't let the scorpions lure the behemoths over here. As expected of a born ruler, Rex quickly recovered his rationality and said with a sharp tone, I'll bring the eagle beast men with me and search for the scorpion beast men's traces. Thankfully, it's the rainy season now and the soil is waterlogged. The scorpion beast men will definitely come out from the soil to take a breath. Blair's eyes lit up. That's great. Thank you. Rex rubbed the head of the female who only reached the level of his chest, feeling grateful. Without her pointing this out, he'd have led the beast men to kill the behemoths. The behemoths would then make their way to the beast central one day. After much difficulty in creating a place where they could protect Blair, he didn't dare to imagine the scene where this place would be wiped out, potentially threatening her life. Time was tight. Rex bore the desire of acting intimately with his maid and said to Roger and Stephen, I'll lead the Eagle Beast men to take care of this. The two of you stay at home and protect Blair. After saying that, he left in huge strides before getting a reply from them. Blair chased him to the door, watching as Rex changed into a white tiger and left. She put her hands together and prayed silently. As Roger had noticed this early, the behemoths were still a very far distance from the city. Rex sat on an eagle beast man whose flying speed was seriously affected due to his wings being wet and took one whole day before arriving at the behemoth's location. Looking down from the sky, the treetops shook nonstop and the behemoth's howls surged through to the clouds with seething fury. This further verified Blair's guess. After experiencing the insect tide, the animals were sparse. The behemoths were hungry and angry, their eyes gleaming with viciousness. They ran amok in the forest, causing towering trees to fall one after another. Roar! Rex let out a roar, and the formation of eagle beast men dashed down uniformly. Jumping onto the ground, Rex immediately sensed the ground trembling slightly. This place wasn't that far from the village. If it wasn't for the heavy rain, their village would have sensed the tremors from the ground as well. 